Hello, welcome back. All right, we continue our series on the mistakes that people make with their money. Now, this next one will not make me popular. <laughs> Unsustainable lifestyle spending. Can't get a grip on finances, can't get a grip on what we spend, don't want to talk about it, don't want to deal with it, all that. All right, so let's, let's just dive in here. Uh, some people hate the, world, hate the word budget. It's a, it's a bad word. Um, more carefree free people don't want to be limited. I mean, who wants that, right? I mean, I can understand that. I can spend money as well as anybody else. Just because I'm a financial planner doesn't make me a tightwad. I, I, a lot of people can relate to that. Some people, though, are just built differently. It's our personality. Some people are more of that saver, budgeter, operate from a place of scarcity and, and concern about money. Some people aren't. Some people are more focused on what comes in versus what goes out. And so there is and can be very often with couples a built-in conflict about their finances. And it is a source of major stress. It is a source of, in many cases, marital problems and divorce. And so the easiest way to get on the same page, ready? This should come as no surprise, is to get a financial plan. You know, it's interesting. Um, sometimes the, the two people in the couple relationship, they come at it from a very different place and the communication has gotten broken down. They already think they know what the other person is going to say. And I've been in meetings where I'm talking to both of them and they're both saying the same thing to me but they're both hearing different things from each other. So I, I find I end up being a, a, almost like an interpreter, talking to one and talking to the other, and, and sometimes translating. So when you build a plan, and especially if you have a third party who is neutral, who's trying to help, it becomes pretty obvious. This is what you've got. This is what you're trying to do. Uh, this is where you need to be, and this is how much you can take. Now, my personal opinion is it's not really my job to tell you how much you can spend on Starbucks or buying a new fiddle. I mean, that's not my job. Um, but sometimes I will if somebody needs me to. But, but my job I see, and a lot of financial planners agree with this approach, is that I'll tell you how much money you can take. Then the two of you, the couple, needs to decide where that money is spent. But the real key point is that the budgeter, the saver, the person who is stressed about the spending can have a level of comfort that is, here's what we know we can spend, we know we're not going to run out, and they can relax. The spender, the more carefree spouse, can say, okay, good. I know what we can spend. We can negotiate and talk about where we'll spend it. And they're happy because guess what? That's what they wanted to do to begin with. So the, the real key is to get a plan because if you are spent, here's, here's the challenge and why it's so important. If you spend more than you make or take in or receive an income, it can really set up almost a domino effect. Now, if you're still working, an occasional bout of excessive spending or living beyond your means, or even being realistic in the fact that you can't save a lot during different periods in your life, that's life, that's reality. You know, if you're putting kids through college or you are trying to save up for a home or you're buying your first car or you've got student loans, all those things may very much take precedence over and prevent you from piling a lot of money in your 401k. Okay, we all get that. But when you get closer to retirement, you are a, in that five to 10 years out from retirement, it's crunch time. You need to be putting them as much away as you can. And then when you get into retirement, what you've got is what you've got. If then you have retired and you are taking more or spending more, then you've got an income. Then you've only got two ways to deal with that higher outflow than inflow. One, 
put it on credit cards or other short-term debt, and you delay having to pay them off, and you just make your minimum payments or whatever it is. Or you pay it off, you have to use some of your retirement assets, and guess what now? You have a permanent reduction in your retirement assets. Does that mean those retirement assets are gonna last longer or shorter? Obviously, they're not gonna last as long as they would. Now, we could say, well, yeah, but if I have some good returns and I invest well, and you know, that's what my advisor's supposed to do anyway, uh, he, he or she can make that up, that's their job. Well, maybe so, but you would still have more if you didn't take more out than you should have. So that good return that they would have had would have given you even more. So the point is, it's a permanent reduction and you could potentially imperil your financial future. You know, before I let you go on this series, let me put a big bow around it. Um, let's recap. Why, why do planning? Why address these things? You know, it's very easy to, to kind of just ignore it and say, yeah, I'm gonna get to that later. That, that really is important. I'll plan my future tomorrow. Uh, and it, everybody's done it, everybody's guilty. I, I've made mistakes over the years. I, I look back and go, golly, I could, do, I could have done that a lot better or I could have made a better choice, but we are where we are today. Can't change the past. What can we do going forward? And it really boils down to financial independence. That's what this is all about. There are things you can do that will help your situation. And I'll give you a quick rundown to kind of, again, kind of summarize this series about the mistakes that people make with their money. Here are some of the things that you can do. You know, cheap, well-run, good-performing mutual funds. Great step in the right direction. Not giving money that you might need for yourself to your family or friends. That's a good idea. How about addressing long-term care? I'm not saying everybody needs it or should have it. Statistics vary. You may not need it, but at the very least, look at it, understand it, consider it for your individual situation and see if it makes sense. What else should you do? Well, what about inflation? In recent years, inflation has been tame. Will it be more of an issue in the future? At some point it will be. Can I tell you when? Nope, can't do that, but we have to plan for the unexpected or the uncertain. That's all part of planning. Do you do things to make sure that you aren't pulling money out of an, a portfolio that's going up and down and potentially exposing you to liquidating your investments at a time when you're gonna get less for them? Absolutely. Um, that's just part of building a plan. Do you um, make sure you're diversified enough? You know, I know some of these are obvious, but critical for your future. But you want to make sure that your plan is coordinated. It's like an orchestra. There needs to be coordination or it just, it's not a symphony, it's a cacophony, okay? You need it all to be brought together and that's why I'm such an advocate for planning and, and looking for ways to make the best of what you've got and that will get you where you need to be. So be cognizant of these things, be aware of them, understand that you have to have a measured plan and you can live retirement with comfort, joy, confidence, but you have to know that you're not gonna run out. And there are ways to do that. And that's what people very often don't realize. That's what financial planning is all about. And that's why financial advisors do what they do. If you'll do these things, if you'll plan ahead, you'll plan stronger.